Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. We are on part eight of the John Panisi interview series, former made member of the Italian Mafia, the Casey Cram, uh, Crime Family uh, in New York City. Today's a birthday episode. Today's my 45th birthday. I have the McAllen 18 on hand. Uh, I know I'm going to get shit for it. Yes, I do put on the rocks, and yes, I drink out of a mason jar. Eat to each his own, but more importantly, let's get to the special guest of the day, John Panisi. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Happy birthday, Tom. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So we're going to talk about the mob, the modern mob, the modern Italian mafia, and media. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it because there's a gazillion podcasts on John Gotti. But my first question to you, John, uh, John Panisi, is the post Scotty era of the debacle of the media getting involved. Uh, what, when you stepped into the life, what were kind of adjustments, rules, changes in the post Scotty era of the Italian mafia in New York City? Well, I mean, there was, there was nothing in, in stone, but you know, like, like you always hear me say, we, we, history is our biggest teacher, you know, it teaches us. And I think with, Johnny Gotti, he he was too flashy. He was too flamboyant. You know, uh, not when I came in, but when even before me, you you've seen guys not wearing suits anymore, and they toned clothes down uh, a lot more casual. Um, not the social clubs have all closed down. I mean, you know, we had one and it, it closed down as well, but. It 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 was mo it was mainly um, that whole flashiness and that you know um, guys there were certain guys that still acted like that um, but it it was definitely toned down and we toned ourselves down and we tried not to uh, most of us tried not to bring attention to ourselves when when before that you know. Everyone knew if you went to a restaurant and you looked, um, you seen, you knew who they were. You knew all oh, the wise guys over there when we could have probably blended in a lot better. So it was more of trying to blend in, you know, with, with everybody. And I never also, yeah. the, 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 sorry, the one thing that definitely changed was the, the introduction um, changed. It was now in Italian. Whereas years ago, you know, guys were saying, you know, this is a friend of ours and this is, you know, when the introduction changed to Mika Nostra, I, and my belief was that um, it came out too much, you know, in the media, it came out in, in books, it came out in movies. And, you know, so that if you were introducing somebody and you were in a restaurant, you know, you really don't want the people sitting next to you to know what you're saying in English. This is uh, this is Tom. He's a friend of mine. Or this is Tom. He's a friend of ours. They may know what we're doing, and yeah. you know, so things like that changed. Interesting. So I we're gonna get more into the media and also social media, which I'm super interested to hear. But you talked about blending in, and I never asked you this privately, and I never asked you this on the podcast. As far as you knew in your family, your mother, your, your siblings, your cousins, your neighbor, the dog, whatever, when you got straightened out, did people kind of know? They knew you were connected. They knew you as a, a regular guy. What, how, what did the closest people know about John Panisi post uh, getting straightened out? Um. I didn't, I obviously didn't say anything. Yeah. Fortunately, there was a, um, there was a guy who had just passed away and he was a very low on the totem pole associate to the Gambinos. And it was Blaze Carrazzo who told him and, you know, just for people that don't know, he's not supposed to tell an associate that I just got straightened out yeah. and and he did because he's a yak yet on he's got a big mouth and he and and I'm not saying anything that other people don't know um and he 
told this particular guy who in turn did worse, told my mother. Yikes. And, yeah. And, you know, look, my mother grew up in East New York, Brooklyn, and knows everybody and their mother, and asked me if it was true and, and all of that. But, um, you know, I, I don't think anybody else really knew. Um, I may have had ideas. People may have had, had ideas. Yeah. Uh, you said social media. Um, okay, we're going to the social media in a second. Yeah. And, and the, the reason why people listen to this podcast is because of you and you've been fully transparent. How does a conversation exactly go with your mother when she's like, listen, I heard, you know, you're a mafioso. What, you know, how does that conversation go? She, well, she told me what, what the guy said. <laughs> and, um, you know, my mother, it's funny, my mother, her reaction was, please be careful because don't forget what she's been through with me. You know, she's, I was away for 17 years and it, it, it destroyed her. And, you know, so in her mind, that's not really what she wanted for me, obviously. And, and she was worried about me getting in trouble and, and going, and going back in. Got it. Now we talked, we're going to get the social media in a second. Um, we talked about a little bit about after you got straightened out, all of a sudden, the favors started coming. People want to borrow money from the book. <laughs> so obviously, you know, somebody knew, right? It wasn't as much as... Oh, no. Well, you know, when I... when I, You know, you got to remember something. These guys, um, you know, in the street, people are going to... People are going to talk, you know, regardless of how low-key you try to be or, you know, they're going to talk. And it, it does start spreading around. And, you know, people start whispering and, 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 and speaking. I, I think had I not been in Staten Island, I would have been even more lucky that Staten Island ruined me because they, you know, they're, they're, it's, I call it the cesspool of New York for a reason. And it's, it's like a cesspool of gossip, but that, you know, eventually People, you know how it is. People talk, and it just spreads, and and it and it goes around. Well, wait, hold on, John. I got to ask you this. Um, and we'll tell you, we'll get to the other media in a moment. So, folks, just bear with me because I I have to ask this. What yeah. First, what was the first favor somebody came to you for after you got straightened out by a civilian? What was it, and did you do it or not do it? Um, I think I mentioned it. It was, um, it was a, actually, it was a family member who asked me to get involved in a situation where one gym member, owner, not member, sorry, where one owner of a gym was giving a problem and starting trouble with another guy who broke off of him and made like a smaller gym and um starting to really terrorize the guy a little bit and um and i yeah i stepped in and um had had somebody go talk to the guy and we straightened it out it was it was not really a big thing or a big yeah. deal it was straightened out quickly and and then the very next thing was another cousin coming to me i told you was about a little league coach and it wasn't anything like you you know it was nothing it was nothing yeah it was nothing um crazy or anything like that you know wait, 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 what was he like not starting junior like what what like, <laughs> like, yeah he he uh the coach was a football and and it was my son's um uh, my sorry it was my um my cousin's son and the wife, and he made some kind of a comment like the kid's not good enough in uh, front of him. Yeah. That's why, you know, the wife said like, you know, how come he's not playing? Yeah. And he, you know, in front of the kid, he said something like, well, he's not playing because he's not good enough or whatever it was. And um, I had somebody uh, in a, you know, get me the guy and, you know, <laughs> he never wanted to say it again. It was apologetic. So, so when I when I'm your cousin and you did his favor to me, like is it 
do, you, do I owe you? Do no. You bucks? Like, what's in that? No. I've never won any, anything that I've ever didn't for anyone. I never looked for anything in return or never had my hand. I was not one of those guys that had my hand out. I didn't want nothing. In other words, look, if you're going to do something for somebody, you do it. You know what I mean? And that's that. And, and I don't like the people who throw things in people's faces either. You know, you do it and it's over. You, you do it because you want to do it. True. So, which, which, what, what was the weirdest request? Did you ever get like a weird, like weird yes. request? Yeah. Like, Dude, this ain't the movies. Like what was the weirdest nonsensical thing? I, you with? I, well, I was, um, it's great. It's a funny story. I was, I, I was introduced to this guy, and I don't mean that way, right? I, I just introduced, you know, this is uh, as uh, civilians, right? And um, his name was Joe, Joe Russo from Long Island, and his father was was a friend at one time with the Columbo's while he was alive, and um, it's funny because two things happened just quickly. The guy was acting like a trying to act like a wise guy. Now I was a friend at the table, and one of the guys was with me, knew the guy, and he started talking about prison. And I was under the impression that the guy did a lot of years in prison. So two things when the guy embarrassed himself. One, the guy told him who I was, and two, the guy told him how much time I did. And he turned around and said to me, oh, Mikey just told me, you know, you were away with him and how much time you did. Gee, I feel stupid. He says, you know, I only did a couple of months in the county jail. <laughs> I thought this guy did a whole bit, right? Well, it's a big, long story, but to cut to, cut to the chase, he had a, a, a cousin that was there. I just, Tom, it was just like I met the guy. Right then and there, I never knew the guy before. And when I went to go get my car, the cousin came out of the restaurant and told me, listen, I want to, my girl is cheating with this guy. I, you know, I, I want to kill the guy. You know, you think you can help me out? I looked at him like he was not. First of all, is, you know, that's not, that's not something that, you know, somebody should approach you with. And, um, and I had mentioned it to this guy that I was with. He told this you know, this guy, Joe, and he was upset that his, that his cousin would, would even ask me something like that. But that was the craziest. And I looked at him like he was crazy. Like, you know, you, you know, but that was the craziest thing that someone's ever said to me. Interesting. So, so you never disappoint, John. So you get out, I think in 07, which is basically when social media started, you know, rising, you know, Facebook, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, Instagram, which, you know, you're active on now. Yes. But to be candid, um, you know, I remember reading an article in the Daily Mail about these like, Sicilian wise guys, you know, young kids, new kids, yep. on the showing like stacks of cash, the girls, this, that. And, you know, just couldn't help me think about, you know, I don't think it's as prevalent here with wise guys. They're not like on Facebook running around, but some guys are. So give me kind of like your experience, you know, what social media is, you know, it sounds stupid, but what social platforms were you on? What were some of the guys you knew on? Was there official edict that came down from the administration? No social media. I know it sounds funny, but like it's a reality. So give us kind of like the state of the mob in social media in, you know, 13 to 17, you know? Well, I could tell you that you are not you're not permitted to be on any social media yeah. and you shouldn't be on social media, but I see that, you know, and heard of guys that were, there was, I've never heard any kind of, um, I never heard any kind of, um, you know, um, rule or any talk of, Hey, don't go on social media. You're not allowed. I never heard any of that. There was nothing official, but um, you just knew that you shouldn't be on there. You know, you, you you know, if you're a friend, you shouldn't be on social media at all. And I've I've heard a story one time where it was a different Bagada, and someone said that 
called them rats for being on social media and they got together and they, you know, it was other friends saying against their own Bogota that they're, they're a bunch of rats and it was a whole big thing it was with the bananas but but um um yeah you i didn't have any nothing yeah. back then and um and basically everyone around us i don't believe did um you know uh with the exception of joe perna which i think he's on there now um they these they, they should not be on social media um you know, I think even uh, Joey Molino had social media. It's just something that's a no-no. And I, I'm surprised to see that they had social media. You know, you're putting yourself out there and you shouldn't be out there. Interesting. The, the Instagram gangster. So, so um, which brings us to kind of from 13 on, there are also kind of like niche mob sites. Yeah, Gangland, you still have Gangland, uh us the news uh ed scarpo say uh my my personal favorite shout out to five families nyc no bullshit just put some good stuff up there um about the mafia i mean there's probably about like a good five to eight sites that existed you know kind of kind of along the way and um i remember even like you're reading about one of the wise guys asked another guy for a password so you want to read about him like you know and a lot of guys are vain so give us kind of like the platforms did you read those platforms you follow those platforms did people complain about those platforms oh man i was on this or or happy to you know so give us other platform uh, sites so like let's just talk about the uh, gangland um i didn't have it i was not subscribed to it back then and um big john was and he was always bringing it up and he would say hey did you see who so and so you see what they said in gangland and i would say i keep telling you i don't have it here and he would go on and hand me his phone to read it <laughs> um um a lot of guys like we all you know googled and you know looked up certain things um but not i didn't really hear too much talk sometimes you would hear something if if something was big happened yeah. You know, people would be reading something, but we didn't like these other ones. We didn't know about, you know, there's a bunch of, uh, of people putting articles and whether they're blogs or columns or whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, Gangland at that, at that time was, was a very popular one, but now there's other ones. Um, and it, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't such a big, uh, conversational piece that people spoke about but once in a while you would hear somebody mention hey did you see who they had the other day or they printed this or whether they were in the post or the daily news um you know it wasn't wasn't such a big deal to us interesting so you and i chat a little bit about this let's focus in on gangland so we're going to say to a recent issue that you had um in terms of gangland it was very pro you know, FBI pro law enforcement the last few years. Talk us about that and how it migrated over to kind of a um, wise guy. Yeah, I mean, in the in the beginning, when 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 Gangland started, and if you read the articles, you could see that he was writing pro government, right? And with the reason being is because he was getting um, information from certain agents that he befriended or was friends with and um so that you know you, that's where the information is coming to him so he's going to put it out in a light that is pro-government right but you know as sources dry up or people retire or whatnot or you know they retire and they're out of the loop um he had made um the contacts and kind of burned his bridges from what i from what i heard yeah. and, and you know and burned himself out so you know what are you going to do now he now switched over he meaning uh jerry capisi switched over to defense lawyers if you read the articles you could see it i mean it's yeah. really yeah. one-sided and but what's happening is is that you have now friends wise guys 
giving information through their lawyers, via their lawyers, to Jerry Capisi, and he's writing it. You know, whether they want to discredit somebody or muddy up their name or whatnot, um, or, you know, speak speak out against the government and, you know, claim unfairness or whatever, whatever have you. They're doing it through their lawyers. And um, some of it, some of them, God only knows, may be doing it through him personally. And, you know, that's a no-no. That's a cousin no no-no, no-no. Because you... You, you don't speak the news reporters. <laughs> and so that's really what's, what's, what's happening there. And so now in turn, to answer your question, what, what happens? The, the, as Jerry Capisi calls it, his column is now pro wise guy. Yeah. You know, as I put it in my blog. Okay. Yeah. So now his, like I said, the 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 column reads pro wise guy. So he he's obviously rewarding whoever it is that's giving him the information in his in his articles. Okay. And then you were saying that they would give a lot of disinformation on purpose, either to advance their own, maybe their own trial, help you know, public opinion, or just yes. bullshit. Um, to throw him off the scent because feds may read it and they almost used him almost as like a tool for yeah. the agenda, correct? Well, yeah, it's a win-win. He's using them and they're using him. Got it. Now, mm-hmm. you we're going to chat about this because on your blog before we conclude, um, you had a little bit of, a, not a run-in, but a little bit of a, an active disagreement, we'll call it, with right. Mr. PC. So tell us about that, John. Well, when when the first person to uh, write about me or, or interview me was the Cosa Nostra News. And right after that, um, I received an email and it was from Jerry Capisi. Yeah. And in the email, he's, you know, praising the name of the, of the blog that I put out there and, and, you know, speaking highly about the stories and whatnot. And, um, and I, then I, I, I mentioned that he also throws like a little dig and he called my, he said, your friends over at the U S attorney's office. And, you know, that's like, it kind of was showing me his character right there. Um, funny, right? Like, so coming from someone who used to get nothing but information from them, now he's, he's kind of speaking like, that's why I wrote in there. He's speaking like a, a mob associate. Yeah. Um, so, um, but like I wrote, I practice forgiveness now and I got in touch with him. And um, when I got in touch with him, he said, hey, I want to do what he called the peace on you. Um, and, and um, you know, he was saying that he wants to, to write a story about the blog and whatnot. And um, which he did, but he failed to mention that he put in not one, but two motions to my judge. Now he does get in touch with me after that, telling me, hey, by the way, I did you a favor. I filed a pro se motion and, and you know, but the part that was disturbing to me was that he never discussed it with me, A, and he tells me after the fact, B, and then C, in the, it's not just filing a motion to have the, uh, the sentencing, the, it was an upcoming sentencing made public, which was fine, there's nothing to hide. It was that he let the judge know about the blog and the Instagram. And, you know, he, he didn't discuss none of these things with me. He just did it and put it in and said, Hey, by the way, I did you a favor. I don't know how he thought that was doing me any favor. Mm-hmm. He, he wasn't doing me any favor. He was doing himself a favor. Correct. So he tried to twist it and say he was doing me a favor. I even pushed that to the side and forgave him for that. But what 
recently took place is he got in touch with me again and he said, Hey, you, you know, you've really been busy on your blog. And, um, I said, yeah, you know, I've been busy. He says, you know, you're going to put me out of business. Mm -hmm. So I sincerely said that I say, Hey, no, I look, I would never try to do that. He's, I said, as a matter of fact, I always respect the old times. You're an old time. He says, that's right. Yeah. I'm an old time. Yeah. And I says, I, you know, look, I look to help anybody and I can, you know, I would help you, it, you know, I'm not looking to, to tear you and put you out of business. And he now discussed that he wanted to do another story and he wanted to do it on the, the Perno with the housewife story that I did. Right. And then he wanted to do it on the sentencing. And he even told me, don't one up me and, you know, write about you. Cause I, I knew everything, obviously it was my sentencing, you know, and write about it, put it out before me. Cause you know, his comes out on Thursday. Yeah. And I said, no, I would never do that. And I didn't feel it was my place to write about my own sentencing. Right. I, I could have, I just didn't. And, um, he, I, so I said to him, listen, Jerry, I, I just need one favor from you, you know, and I'm here, I am helping him out. He's asking me, can, can you remember anything other than what you wrote about, about the, the Perner and the housewives thing that, you know, could kind of help him have a different edge to the story. And I tried to remember everything. I was trying to help him. Right. Yeah. Now this is after he burned me twice. Sure. So I thought of what I could, I tried to help him the best I could. And I said, Hey, the only, now I'm helping this guy out. The only yeah. thing that I want you to do is do me a favor I've been doing this uh, podcast with, with, with Tom Lavecchi from New Theory and just mention it in there. I want you to mention it. Yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, you know, send me, send me the link. And I said, sure, I'll, you know, I'll send it to you. And we left off like that with me believing that he's going to return the favor, right? Sure. And really, it should have been like penance for him because he already burned me twice. <laughs> and lo and behold, his article comes out Thursday and he collects his five dollar per person. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and what does he do? He does not mention what I asked him to do. And then he misquotes me a lot in his article. Yeah. Said, you know, mentions things and wording that I never said. And, uh, and, and that was the last draw of me. And that's why I wrote you know, I've made my blog about him. Uh, you know, I, look, I got no hard feelings. I'm just not going to do business with him no more. And, you know, let him go to the defense attorneys and get his information. He's, you know, he he's a, you know, at one time he was at the top of his game. And, um, you know, there's new blood <laughs> out there, you know, and, and not only myself, there's a lot of guys writing uh, blogs and, well, also, I mean, if you think about it, it used to be, you know, out, uh, what is his name? George Anastasia, who I'm a big fan of. And a lot of these yep. uh, 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 writers, if you will, who, you know, kind of maybe had some connections. Some people threw them like a bone, a little bit of crumbs. Yep. But now, I mean, you're out here front and center. You know, you have the, respectfully the Johnny and Gene show. And I'm friends with Johnny Light and yep. Gene, they were both on the show. Um, but, uh, Bobby Luisi has a show, uh, Sammy Dubola for some of the older, you know, the older stuff that's out there. So it's almost there's a like, lot of got yeah, there's a lot out there. So it's almost like they kind of, you know, became, you know, irrelevant. Um, so to kind, yeah. of, kind of, kind of wrap up and, um, and the thing I like about you is like, you're a pretty straight shooter, but like you were even saying that the current mob back in the day, you maybe have like, you know, Godfather, somebody on the payroll or have some influence or maybe the local Staten Island newspaper, somebody knew the owner, but basically you were saying that like, as far as your Borgata was concerned, you really didn't get involved with the media. You didn't try to manipulate it. You didn't like, just really was like, not your, at least from your perspective or your Borgata's perspective, wasn't really your lane. I was a little shocked at that. I thought there would have been kind of some local no, to it, but. No, but you know, the Borgata, was doing what it was supposed to be doing. And we, the, the media is no friend to Casa Nostra. <laughs> and, you know, we stood away from it. Um, the only, I think I mentioned to you offline, the only 
connection to the media was was something to do with the post where there were certain guys that were involved and and friends with us that had positions in the post and i don't mean editing or writing I, it's got to be down in the you know the distribute uh where they distribute the paper or they yeah. you know send the trucks out and things like that but that obviously had nothing to do with anything with the media the media was kind of off limits you you you, you stood away from it you know years ago you seen the old time right they shied away from the media they didn't want to be right. even seen their face they didn't want their faces seen so you know i think that i i don't ever believe that the media is helping anybody in that life at all it can only hurt you when was the first time you saw your name in the paper or online um i believe i'm trying to think as a as a friend not previous situation well or it was after yeah. i never had i've never had my my name in the paper or anything i i i was low-key there was no reason for my name to be to be out there it was only afterwards so you know, when i was well we you and i talked about this and we'll, we'll try to do I almost think a dedicated episode to it, but you know how like they had the FBI charge ticket released and I, and it, 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 drop a, drop a link below or drop a comment below. I have not seen anything past 2012. Um, so I showed John the 2012 chart and, you know, obviously he was much later. So we'd like to get a 2017 or 2018 or 15 chart. And I would love to John to look at it, but I can tell you at least from personal experience, and you and I discussed this is even back then there's guys on there that like shouldn't be on there. And there's a lot of guys that should be on there that the FBI or whoever releases these charts completely miss. So, yeah, I mean, we don't know who's making the chart, but you know, it's um, sometimes there's a list of names out there and I could just look at them and tell you that there's people definitely missing. Yeah. on that list and people have passed away and whatnot but um i don't believe that um the ones that are on the internet are so accurate as what the uh agents have themselves i'm sure it is are on the money <laughs> and those charts probably you're never going to see yeah so um you know, their charts are definitely up to date and on the money and they're always updating, you know. They... And I have to ask this, John, I hate to put you on the spot, but we did chat with law enforcement. What's something you mentioned to them that blew their mind that they had no clue? They were, they were looking at each other like well, the Casey squad didn't know, the case agents didn't know, the prosecutors didn't know. Was there any piece of information because I don't think they even had you on the chart. If I, I was just going to say that I was a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, they, they, um, I was not under the radar, but they did know um, who I was. And I, I know I keep saying it. Um, one of the first times that my name came up to them was from a person in Staten Island who has been an undercover cooperator with them. He's not a friend. He's a low level associate yeah. for over 15 years. And he's still living out there and rubbing elbows with guy, guys in Staten Island. I can't say his name just yet, yeah. but he, uh, he brings my name to them. Oh, wow. And that, yes, and that's how, and they kind of mixed it up a little bit because it had something to do with uh, a body shop and they thought that I was involved with something with cars, which, which I was not. But so my, I was definitely low key, but they knew who, who I was, but I was not on their radar at all. I was not on their radar. I mean, look, there was a lot of things that we discussed that blew them away. <laughs> you know, it was many, many things that we discussed that, you know, many, and I mean, eventually you know we could speak about them but there was many yeah there's only so many minutes in a day and uh yeah uh, no but i think it's i think it's substantial enough the fact that you were a friend you went in there they didn't know you were a friend there's a whole bunch of dynamics that we could probably i think that they 
I think that they, when everything transpired and I came into them, they looked at it like manna from heaven because it, I fell in their lap because, you know, I didn't come in uh, with, uh, you know, an indictment against me. I didn't come into them from a prison. I didn't come into them, you know, I'm facing sentencing. I had, you know, I came into them with nothing. I had nothing against me and nothing like that. So that is kind of unique to them and um you know it, it was a big deal interesting well listen we're going to conclude uh this is part eight of the john panese interview series uh super important guys um number one put some links below uh of the org charts if you have them number two i believe if, if john's willing and we'll talk about that we're due for a q a session and there's about 300 questions deep across all the okay. platforms. So John, I hope you have uh, your scotch ready. I mean, I, I kind of went through mine. I'm going uh, yeah, to need my scotch. Exactly. And then, and then lastly, just make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when the next, you know, part nine and so forth comes out. We're just going to keep going to this, doing this until it doesn't feel right. But definitely for now, John, listen, as always, thank you for being on the New Theory Podcast. This has been we keep just every episode, I just keep getting more and more um, uh, like involved, more and more engaged. And I'll be candid, I don't listen to a lot of my own podcasts. I don't like to look at myself or hear myself. <laughs> so I give you guys credit if you listen and watch this long. But the shit that you say is just real. And uh, it's just, it's just, it's unique. So, John, thank you again. And um, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you, like, you want to say any parting words before we conclude? Happy birthday again. You know, salute. Happy birthday. I wish you many more. And um, I'll just say a quick hello to Michael. We know who he is. Yes. I love you, buddy. I love you, buddy. All right. All right I'll talk to you. Thank you. Ciao.